Hello, and welcome to another tutorial from Cami Page Boutique. I'm Brooke Tannehill, and today I'm going to show you how I made this kindness-inspired, glitter-striped, and vinyl wrap tumbler. Life can be hard sometimes, and I wanted to create something cheery and colorful that serves as a reminder to do everything with kindness. As always, all of the products I use will be listed in the description below, and you may even find a coupon code or two that saves you some coin. Also, come join our exclusive Facebook group where you can take advantage of upcoming freebies and giveaways that you aren't going to want to miss. So without further hesitation, let's go ahead and get started. For this cup, I started with a 30 ounce straight skinny from Parish Tumblers, prepped it, spray painted it with a white gloss spray paint and let it dry for a couple of hours before starting my stripes. So here, what I'm doing is I am just using a white painter's tape to outline the stripes. And the reason why I spray painted the cup white before moving into the striping and also before we lay our paint down is because I wanted to have a base layer for the paint to really adhere to. When you're doing like peekaboos or any of these um, kind of designs that use tape or any kind of vinyl, I like to put down a nice spray paint layer so that there's really nice adhesion with the paint colors so you don't get any lifting as you do your entire design. All I'm doing here is I'm taking one inch painter's tape and I'm setting my guides for my stripes at the bottom of the cup. I will be using six different colors for the glitter and the paint. So I'm just laying out my stripes so I can have nice crisp lines when I go in and do the paint and then apply the glitter over the top of it. One thing I like to do is I hold the tape pretty like tight so I, there's never any slack and I just use my index finger to kind of guide down and push down the tape as it rotates around the cup. So you can see there, I'm just lining it up and then I use my index finger and roll the cup at the same time to make sure that's nice and pushed down. You'll see that there is just kind of a, like, I don't wanna call it a bubble, but a ripple at one point. So after I get my stripes all laid out, I do take my time, make sure that the tape is nice and pushed down so we don't have any bleeding when we apply the tape in our first line of glitters. Once I'm happy with all of the stripe placement, I'm gonna grab my measuring tape and I am going to mark off where how, how much room I have left over on the top of the cup for my vinyl. And one thing I wanted to make sure is you wanna leave just a little bit of space at the top of the cup so that you have great adhesion for your next coats of epoxy. So I'm just taking that measurement, marking it off on the vinyl, taking my little vinyl cutter that I use here, it's actually more for like cardstock, cutting it down and then it's time to apply it to my cup. This design is from Gracefully Created and I absolutely love Judy's vinyl it's just it's so easy to work with it's super high quality and the colors are so vivid so I just absolutely love this design and I thought that it really played nice with the other glitter colors that we're going to be using but what I do is I light up my vinyl on my cut so make sure it was cut correctly that it's the right size remove a little bit of that backing and then push down the part that's exposed onto the cup once that's secure, I just lift up the backing and then I use my squeegee to carefully push off the rest of the vinyl backing. And what this does is it prevents a lot of the bubbles from appearing and it just allows for the vinyl to go on as straight as possible. Granted, it can get wonky, but if you follow the steps, it should be great. And then I push the vinyl until I get to the starting place of the vinyl that we had originally applied. Then I take a little piece of painter's tape, probably go an eighth of an inch back just so that I don't have any stainless steel exposed. Push down on the vinyl that overlapped the previous layer that we put down. Use my X-Acto knife and just cut a straight edge. So you can see there that it just creates a nice seamless, like not seamless, cause you can obviously see it, but it's just a nice edge of your vinyl. And then it's time to start our stripes. The first color we're using is Smooth Jazz from Ms. Lillian's No Wax Chalk Paint, and these paints are all available on the Cami Page Boutique website. And I am just using a cheapo makeup brush from the dollar store, and I am just applying the paint to the bottom section of the cup. So this is our bottom stripe. I am going on the butt of the cup as well, just kind of make it a seamless transition. And I'm just applying just a nice even coat of paint to that bottom to set that base layer for our glitter. 
Now, Miss Lillian's has self-leveling properties to it, and it dries within like 10 minutes, so it's pretty spectacular, and that's why I chose to use these paints for this tumbler. The next stripe we'll be doing is called Rosebud, and again, this is the Miss Lillian's No Wax Chalk Paint, and I just have a couple of these paintbrushes ready to go so that you can just switch between colors, but you could easily just use one and wipe it off between coats. But I'm just doing a light coat, and then I'm moving into the yellow color that you see here. And this yellow is called pineapple and it was a brand new color that we just started carrying and I absolutely love it because it's just like the softest yellow but it's still got a lot of nice pigment to it that really makes a difference so I'm like obsessed with this color. But again just grabbing another paintbrush and just applying a thin layer even layer of paints to this stripe and then letting that dry and again you can speed this up by um, or the drying process up by using your heat gun or you can just let it sit for about 10 minutes and come into a second coat. After I did a second coat of paint under these stripes, I grabbed my glitter glue from Artistry Epoxy, and I love this stuff. If you've watched any of my previous tutorials, you know that I am a diehard epoxy method fan, but this stuff has changed my mind, especially for these kind of stripes, because it makes it so easy, and you don't have to kind of guess yourself as to how much epoxy to mix up. So I just use this flat edge brush, I think it's about a two inch brush, and just apply a nice even coat of the glitter glue and then I came in with my Violet Dreams from Bougie Glitter Boutique and I am so obsessed with this purple color it just shines so brightly it's just got a tremendous sparkle to it made sure that the whole section was covered don't forget the butt and then it was time to move in to my next color of glitter so again don't have to really worry about cross-contamination just kind of came in immediately after with the glitter glue into that pink section just made sure it was a nice even coat and then this is pinky promise from bougie glitter boutique and i love this pink it's got opals in it it's just got a bunch of different like pinks and even like a tidge of coral i guess you could say and i, I don't even know if tidge is a real word but um i use that color and then for the yellow again coming in with that glitter glue um and just making sure again it's nice and evenly coated the glitter glue will let you know if you're getting it too thin because you can see it will like start to separate and it's not a negative thing it's a really good thing so that you know that you need to come in with more and then i just coated this yellow with peeps from bougie glitter boutique this yellow is just so happy and fun i thought it was perfect for this yellow stripe and then we were done and thanks to the magic of video editing, it looks like we are just coming straight in to remove the tape, but I actually let this glitter glue dry for about two to three hours, sealed the cup twice with Rust-Oleum clear gloss spray paint, and then I am removing the tape. You really, really, really want to make sure that your glitter is sealed before going into this step because it can cause, um, the tape can pull the glitter that you already laid down to lift up, and we do not want to do that. And as soon as I was removing the blue tape, I am going to be applying more. So I am just overlapping the vinyl that we had applied to the cup with a nice clean layer of then as soon as I remove the blue tape, I'm going to reapply it. So I just overlapped the vinyl at the top so that I've got a nice crisp edge for that um, other glitter stripe that we come in with. Then I'm coming in with this um, painter's tape over the top of the glitter. Now, one thing I will say, I did not spend enough time pushing down the tape over the glitter. And you'll see that um, when I come into more of the final layers um, or the final steps of this cup, what you really need to do is is when you apply your tape over the glitter, take time to push down the edges to protect that glitter because otherwise you will get bleeding under that tape. And it wasn't that big of a deal and you can't see it in the finished product, but that was because I got creative and I cut some heart decals from vinyl to kind of cover up those spots. But if you did just want to do the stripes and not the heart decals that I had added, really make sure to push down the vinyl so that you prevent that bleeding for the paint. Now for the second set of stripes, we're going to start with Robin's Egg Blue. And again, I'm just applying a nice even coat of the paint in the striped area. And one thing I do wanna call out is that I was not trying to follow any kind of traditional rainbow pattern. Um, I just wanted to pick some happy colors from channeling my inner Bob Ross, I guess you could say. So I just kind of 
put them down wherever I kind of felt like it. But if you did want to do more of a traditional Raybone pattern, you absolutely could. So that was Robin's Egg Blue. And now I am moving into Vintage Cottage. So this is just a super pale, but yet powerful that's what we're gonna go with um green and i love this it does dry darker than what it looks like in the jar so that's something just to kind of take into consideration but i just love this green color it was again another brand new color that we had just gotten in and i just apply a nice even coat over that section and then the last but definitely not least color is bella coral this is just a beautiful coral paint color that I really, really like. I've used it on several projects now, and I just love how well it colors, like the different like materials that I use. It's just a really great paint that I love to use. So I did do a second coat, so I'm just showing you guys this here. Um, I did dry it um, quickly using my heat gun, but just because these paints are on the lighter side, I just wanted to make sure that I had nice even coverage for my glitters because a lot of the glitter colors that we'll be using are also kind of pastel in their tone i guess you could say so it was really important to get a nice coverage and paint um kind of platform to build up from for these different colors I let the paints dry for about 10 or 15 minutes and then I grab my glitter glue again. And the reason why I like glitter glue so much better than Mod Podge is because it does have a lot longer working time. So when you were working with Mod Podge in the past, I mean, the stuff was typically dry within 10 minutes and you were constantly getting kind of like the overlap, like lines in it because your glitter wouldn't be even. So this stuff is awesome for that. And this blue, by the way, is absolutely beautiful. It is a pastel blue called Moon Mist from Bougie Glitter boutique then I moved into the light green section again getting nice even coverage of the glitter glue but enough glitter glue on there so that it's not kind of separating because if you do that then the glitter really doesn't have anything to adhere to so make sure that you got a nice even coat it doesn't have to be perfect by any means but then I am coming in with this beautiful green color it's just perfect over this um the pale vintage cottage green that we used. And then I moved in to the top coral color that we'll be covering as well. Oh, and that green color, by the way, of glitter that we just applied is called Spring Buds. I don't know why I didn't mention that before. But yeah, just taking my time, adding more glitter glue to the cup. And then we are going to finish off that stripe with a beautiful kind of peachy um, glitter color, which is called um, Fuzzy Navel, again, from Bougie Glitter Boutique. Um, all the glitters I'm using on this cup are from Bougie Glitter Boutique, but you can see just how beautifully that um, glitter just covers the paint and just makes an amazing orange coral color for the stripe. Then once all of the glitter had been applied, I removed the tape and you can even see there that there was a little bit of bleeding underneath the tape. A lot of that's not a big deal because we will be covering it with our pinstriping, but you can see there that there were some couple of like kind of honks that got underneath there. And that is because I didn't push my tape down well enough before I applied my paint and my glitter stripes, but nothing that takes away from the design too much. And I feel like this final pull was kind of the most satisfying because you have to see all the stripes together. Real quick, I let that glitter dry for about two hours and then I sealed the entire cup with Rust-Oleum gloss spray paint, um, let that dry for about 45 minutes, and then I went in with two coats of Artistry's one-to-one -one Fast Set Epoxy. I love that stuff because it covers glitter so well, so much so that I actually didn't need to sand this cup. And for me, that is a very, very big deal. <laughs> um, I am usually talking all the time about how important it is to sand the cup, but I did not need to do it on this step of the process. Also, both of those coats were 30 milliliters of epoxy each, just to kind of give you the measurements in case you were wondering. I let the whole cup dry overnight just because I wanted to make sure that it was good and cured before doing my pinstriping, which is what I have been showing you in the background while I've been talking over it. But the pinstriping took a while, so I figured I had time. So the vinyl I am using for the pinstriping is the textured platinum vinyl from Cricut. 
If you guys have seen any of my tutorials before, you know that I just love this stuff. But I cut this on an eighth of an inch wide. Um, I've really found that my best pinstriping combination has been an eighth of an inch for the base vinyl that you see there, and then coming in with the more detailed vinyl over the top at a sixteenth of an inch. So if you just divide one by eight, you get a decimal point of 0.125. And then if you divide one by 16, you get, I believe it's like, oh, 0.0625 um, but that's just what I follow and that's what I put into design space to cut these and then I also cut the vinyl at 11 inches long so that I knew that I had plenty of um, vinyl to go around the entire surface of the cup and create these pretty lines that we are applying between our stripes. Now, I went back and forth a couple of times with these stripes, so I'm gonna explain kind of how I chose the placement. So what I did is I lined up the vinyl and split the difference between the two glitter colors. So I'll explain like kind of what that means. So I made sure that half of the vinyl was overlapping one color and the other half of the vinyl was un overlapping the other. So that way you got a really consistent um, kind of stripe width because otherwise one would be skinnier than the other. And then I just move my color cup or like I turn my cup and I'll apply the vinyl. So again, just how I had applied the painter's tape before, I just push the vinyl around the cup like by rolling it and then use my index finger to kind of smooth it out so that we don't have walking of the vinyl. So you can see there that like I just use my index finger, push it down, make sure it's not moving as I roll it around the cup. And this helps to really get those nice straight lines that you like to see and get are super visually appealing um, for your customers. Then you just take a super sharp exacto knife push down and remove the excess and then you get a nice perfect seam for our more detailed striping that just goes in the middle of the vinyl that we had already laid down I tried a new vinyl and I was kind of nervous about doing it at first but this is Caesars um, permanent vinyl it's really really similar to Oracal Oracal has just been my ride or die for so long, but they did not have a light pink like this. So I found this um, Caesar brand and I have to say I'm I, I might be a believer. I, I really like this stuff. It really has um, nice give to it. It cut super easy and I just really like the color. So I again, this is the 16th of an inch wide by 11 inches long and I feel like doing the detailed pinstriping is easier than putting the first line of vinyl down because you can really see on both sides whether or not you're lining the pinstriping up so I just go around the cup keeping it as centered as possible within the gold vinyl that we had laid down but it's very similar to the other process one thing I will say though is um, when you are working with these finer vinyls when you push down on the vinyl to cut it with your exacto knife the sharper the blade the better because one thing that has happened was I started with kind of a wonky old blade um, and when I would push down and then try and remove the excess vinyl it would actually pull up the stripe that I wanted to leave on the cup and it got a little wonky and it wasn't hard to fix but it was kind of just a pain so make sure that you're using a nice and sharp knife and it will make this process so much easier once I had all of my stripes applied, before I moved into my next coats of epoxy, I did want to take my Dremel um, and just expose that top layer of stainless steel. Granted, we had already really done that with the uh, vinyl because we cut it a little bit shorter. This is just a precautionary step that I like to take. It takes literally 10, 15 seconds to do, and it's just... I don't think it was necessarily needed for this cup, but I did it just as an extra step. So again, this is a 123 8 flap wheel from Dremel, and I am using this full bore on my Dremel 3000. Then I come in with my 80 grit sanding block just to make sure that I don't have any pokey bits. And then I move into my next layers of epoxy. One thing I did do before moving into my coats of epoxy, and I really wanna make sure to call this out, is I sealed my vinyl. Because it is so detailed and the vinyl is so thin with a lot of um, ends, I guess you could say, with like the seams that could stick up, I just use Quick Coat from CC DIY and I am just covering the vinyl to make sure that it's nice and sealed to the cup so that I do not get any lifting when I go into my coats of epoxy. This is so important because you don't want like pokey bits from your vinyl sticking up and then coming back to your cup once the epoxy's dry and being like, oh my gosh, how do I fix this? So highly recommend sealing your vinyl. You can use Quick Coat, you can use a polyacrylic, whatever floats your boat. 
but just take an extra step, seal your vinyl, make sure that it's good and dry. So do not move into a coat of epoxy until this stuff is at least dried for an hour or two hours then you can move into your epoxy. So again here, I am using Artistry's one-to-one -one fast set. This stuff is amazing because again, it literally is dry to the touch in an hour and a half to two hours. It's an amazing consistency. And because I had used it on my previous layers, I didn't have to sand. So if you are looking at this cup and you know how I do my tutorials typically, I am sanding all the time. It did not need it, but I am just applying this over the entire surface of the cup. I'm doing a little bit of a thinner coat because we are just trying to cover that vinyl, nothing spectacular that we're having to do. So I'd say I mix up about 20 milliliters, 20, 25, and just doing a nice smooth coat over the entire surface just to make sure that that vinyl is good and secure before moving on to our next steps. I waited about two hours and I was super impatient. So I came in to do the vinyl work. I grabbed my Candy Page Boutique Cup Cradle and then I wanted to start applying my vinyl hearts that I cut out here. So for these hearts, I actually did the opposite of the pen striping. So I wanted to do the pink as the back part of the heart. And what I was showing you first there is that I had a little bit of bleeding from the paint that we had talked about. So. Nothing like covering it up with a nice decal. So I didn't like the placement of that first heart, but I am just moving around and just cutting these out. The hearts will be available for free in the Cami Page Boutique um, Facebook group, but I cut them out at an inch and a half wide, and then I also cut off their arf offset. So this again is the textured platinum vinyl from Cricut, and I am just placing these over the top of the vinyl hearts that we had laid down. You could do this with transfer tape. I just didn't feel like messing with it. I, I was kind of feeling lazy this day, which is never a good thing. So you can easily use transfer tape if you like, but using your X-Acto knife for me at this point was just as great. Um, but I just move around and just apply the offsets to the hearts. And there's two different hearts that are actually cut here. One, like it's just, it's flipped. So just so you know. Um, so I just made sure that I was using the right offset for the right heart. And then I actually went back into design space and I cut some half inch hearts that you'll see here in a moment. And I just kind of placed them every so often to kind of complete the look of the vinyl that we're laying down. So here are the, the hearts and these are the free hearts in design space. Again, I just added, I think like 10 of them to the kind of canvas and then cut them out in design space and at half inch wide. And I just kind of filled up any of like the spots on the cup that I felt like needed just a little extra detail. I don't know what was up with me this day, but I had a lot of issues with my placement. I didn't, I wasn't happy with it. So I was putting a lot of hearts down and then pulling them up and then putting them back down. But I feel like I, I got it in the end. But yep, you just kind of apply these little hearts every so often just to kind of bring the whole look together. Um, I just liked them in the glitter and also over the stripe. So it's just kind of whatever floats your boat. There is no wrong, right or wrong. And then it was time to do the decal. This decal is for sale at the Kami Page Boutique website. I will link it below, but I cut the offset in the textured Cricut brand um, vinyl again in platinum. And with this vinyl, uh, textured vinyl, you want to make sure to select the premium textured vinyl setting in Cricut. It makes it so easy to weed and cut this and it's just literally a presetting. So you just set your Cricut to custom and then go into the um, design space and select the premium textured vinyl and it makes it so easy. And then I also cut using the Caesar. This is how I like to layer vinyl. Um, I'm just not good at remembering to grab wax paper before lining everything up. So I just take the backing off the first vinyl that I weed, then just roll it down um, with the transfer tape just to get everything lined up. So take the glossy paper, lay it on top of the back of it and then line everything up and then pull it off. So to make sure that I have everything centered, I measured the tumbler top, like where the printed vinyl is. And actually what was kind of funny, it was that there was a yellow spot on the printed vinyl so where I could literally see where the center was so I didn't have to make a mark or anything. So I just eyeballed that place and then lined up the center of the decal and applied it from the center out. So see you adhere it to the center of the cup and then roll outwards to make sure that you're not getting any bubbles and then it just lays down nicely because you're pushing the air out from under the decal and it just adheres nicely. So I take my time really pushing down the vinyl and then I pull the transfer tape back sharply. So like almost like as smooth with the cup as possible and that prevents any of the vinyl from lifting. 
And since there are some little pretty dots and hearts in this decal up top, I did want to take my time and seal this vinyl. I didn't seal the hearts below because I felt like they were pretty well and adhered to the cup, so I didn't seal them, but if you feel the need, you absolutely can. Then I came in with two coats, and for this, the final layers, which you do not have to do, I just used Artistry's regular epoxy. I love this stuff because you can get really nice coverage and thin layers. It does take a full 12 hours to dry, but because I was not in any hurry, and I just like how thin these layers are compared to some of the, um, the thicker viscosity epoxy, it was perfect for this project. So I just applied 20 milliliters twice, and this baby was done in here this baby is i just love how all of the decal work the printed vinyl and the glitter just all just coordinate so well it's just fun and cheerful uh, this tumbler turned out so cute and i cannot wait to get it to its forever home and it can just be a beacon of kindness for everybody i hope this tutorial inspires you and i can't wait to see what you create if you have any questions about any of the steps or information shared, please feel free to reach out and I will be more than happy to help. As always, thank you for watching. It really means a lot to me. If you like this tutorial, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you can see future videos. You can also ring the bell so you are notified of all future cup making goodies. Thank you again. I love you guys. Bye.